Yeah, I think I'd be loud better than this. Yo, my brother. Yo, we're good. We're good. What's the word? Oh yeah, doing oh, yeah, sideways. Doing sideways. Now, I, no, I, I turned it sideways because how we sitting. Oh, I can, oh, do, I can it do it that way. Okay, okay. Steph, what's good with you, baby? Hey, Mike. Man, it's good to see you. Love you. Everything is good. Good man. to see you as well. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you, my brother. Yeah. I'm ready. Good. You yeah, heard? I'm ready when y'all ready. I, I, I say no more. Say no more. Am I you ready? Yes, sir. Another episode of the world's fastest, largest growing podcast. We live from Houston, Texas. I got a very, very special guest. One of the best to ever do it from the point guard position from New York. Did it on the high school level. Did it on the college level. Did it on the NBA level. I got Brooklyn's own, Coney Island's own, Mr. Stephon Marbury, my guy. How's it going? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Thanks for having me on the show, baby. And I also got my big cousin here. We blood cousins. NBA champion, 15-year NBA vet, <laughs> Mike James. What's good, my guy? Man, I'm just excited to be on this episode. You know, there's a lot that we're going to talk about today. You know, we're going to give flowers to, you know, Starberry's just life, man. And also... Do we even want to talk about like this, all this argument about New York's finest? And I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna give my opinion as well. You know, being a, I'm a Long Island guard. I ain't really considered a New York City. That's why they <laughs> a New York City guard. But I think that I'm still able to speak on this subject as well. You know what I mean? And so. Cool. Cool. I think I think I'm a little validated. So, but at the same time, man, we just wanted to have you on here, man. <laughs> you, stamp, like you stamp. <laughs> you stamp. You stamp. You stamp. It ain't about, it ain't really, it, to be honest, it ain't really about high school. It's really about, you know, using that, that foundation to go where everybody want to go. So, you know, um, I think the conversation is being spoken about, but at the end of the day, that's that's just talk. Hold on one second. Yeah, uh, of course, man. Steph, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Um, growing up Coney Island, Brooklyn, um, of course I grew up with my cousin. You had this reputation to be one of the only guards that could put the like you was you had hops, you had handles, you had the jump shot. Um, where did all that come from growing up in Brooklyn? Well, you know, it was a stigma of New York City point guards not being able to shoot. So, you know, we eliminated that from an early age. My brother Don, he was the best shooter in our family. So, you know, for for me, watching him and him working with me with my shot, that was something that was important. Um we always knew that if you could shoot the basketball, you know, every New York guard can get to the basket. <laughs> I don't know one New York guard, you say, oh, he only can shoot, but <laughs> but he can't get to the he can't get to the rack. So that was an important factor 
growing up, making sure you knew how to shoot the basketball. Um, you know, the name of the game is put the ball in a hole. So, you know, you can shoot the ball and you can drive, penetrate, and kick. You know, that pretty much puts you in a it puts you in the realm of being able to go to the NBA, <laughs> which is the ultimate goal, right? I wanna I, I wanna say this though, like I, I'm I'm here, I got my cousin here, and and I got you on here, but I'm a big fan too, man. Like straight up, this this say we're a podcast, but at the same time, I remember how you were cooking everybody. I'm like, yo, listen, I, I gotta keep it real though. Step, hold up, I gotta keep it real. I'm, I'm trying to go to my questions, but I, I I gotta be real, man. I gotta do your flowers, yo. Like I remember you, I remember you was cooking everybody. You had the part in the middle. I don't know where that came from. You you know what I'm saying? Kenny, Kenny, that came from Kenny, Kenny and Larry Johnson. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was my idol, you know. Kenny was my idol growing up, you know, our Bishop Malloy. He was actually, I had a, I had a debate about, I see I was looking at the the uh, some clips of your show when guys was talking about Catholic school and public school. And, um, you know, our Bishop Malloy was one of the, the schools that a lot of the guards always looked towards, especially the coach with Jack Hearn. You know, so you know, though Kenny was the person that that inspired me to do the part in the middle. <laughs> Yo, you know what, Steph? Um, speaking about just New York, um, New York guards, there's so much competition at that position. You know what I mean? From the park to whether you're playing against these players in the um in school. What was the biggest rivalries? Was it in school or was it on the playgrounds? It was on the playground for me. My biggest rival was Qaddafi Alonzo. He played for Madison, Madison High School. Because we played against each other every day. He beat me one-on-one, I beat him one-on-one, and then whoever loses, we always fight after. <laughs> right? Because we so mad, we lost. But, you know, the part, Coney Allen, where I'm from, you know, we call it the guard in the court when we play that. That was my biggest competition. It wasn't really playing at basketball camps and playing all American camps, games. It was always inside the park because you know in the park, that's where they were basically everybody was trying to come up. You know what I'm saying? And you know, me being one of the younger guys playing with the older guys, you know, I was I constantly was getting my head thrown into the gate, you know, but they will make you get up, the bigger guys. Even when you get down or you fall down, they'll wait for you to get up. Like, get up. Like, you ain't, you're not gonna stop playing. You know what I'm saying? So, coming from Coney Island, playing in Coney Island, it was a little different out there because we didn't play fouls. So we, you know, it was like a mind frame and a mindset of what was established from my older brothers and the people that played with those guys. I mean, you think talking about guys playing in it, in the eighties and seventies, you know, they didn't, they didn't call foul, you know, they call foul probably game point. Like when somebody tackled you, <laughs> you know what I'm but even then, right. You shoot the basketball, you, ta you tackle somebody, the ball go in. If we didn't play and one, you got to really make a clean shot. Right. You know what I'm saying? So those days that, that enriched the, the basketball spirit of getting on the court and playing, you know, you just hoop. You know what I'm saying? So you could play in any atmosphere. Um, Lincoln High School, stellar career. Take us back to that, just the energy at that time, the, the 90s. Just take us back to that time. I mean, coming out of junior high school, CYO, AAU, going into Lincoln as a freshman, starting as a freshman, um, a lot of people don't know. I had to try out. My coach made me try out. I didn't just get the privilege of just getting on the team. Everybody know Bobby Hartstein. He was a stellar, stellar coach. Um, highly ranked coach throughout basketball throughout America, not just in, in New York. Um, so my foundation was always you had to earn it. And I had no problem with earning it because, you know, I, I worked hard. I stayed, I came early and I stayed late. Uh, my coach wouldn't let me leave the court until 
I made five swishes. You know what I'm saying? It's like that was the mind frame of what was being taught. So from a, from my freshman year, you know, my my freshman year, that was like <clears throat> the biggest transition from you know playing AAU. Now I'm playing with guys that are being highly recruited. You know, Daryl Flick and God rest his soul. Temple was recruiting him. Shaka Ship. You know, he 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 went to C Hall, so he was all American. I'm um, playing with these guys at a young age. You you always had respect, you know what I'm saying? Which is the era that I grew up in. You always had to respect the older guys, no matter how nice you was. And because I earned their respect, they trusted me to play the point coming out of, of high school. I'm coming out of junior high school. You know, freshman running the point, that's that's hard when you're playing with guys who are getting ready to prepare themselves to go to big time division one schools. You know what I'm saying? So for me, you know, I was always a student of the game. So I had to learn what guys like to do on the court and then still try to do my thing, but more so play more of a point guard role. Um, my sophomore year, you know, I had more of a, a a bigger responsibility, a bigger role, even though I had my cousin, you know, Ace, Ace of Beard um, and, you know, some other guys that were really good on our team. It's a lot of guys that, you know, are – that have been missed that, that that don't get talked about in high school basketball that play really well during those days. My, my junior year, that's when I started to really understand the high school game <clears throat> to where, you know, I, I got to the point where I was able to dominate, um, but still couldn't get over that hump and, and, and winning the championship. Um, and then my senior year, that's when everything pretty much started to come together as far as me understanding the game in, in high school, but more so start my preparation for getting ready to go to college. Um, at that time, a lot of people were saying I should come right out of come right out of high school and go to the NBA, but I because I had the huh? I was gonna ask uh, you that too. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know. How you go to school? My, my coach was like, yeah, a lot of, yeah, I mean, I was, but I, I I wanted to have the college experience and because my brothers play college basketball, they they all understood that my body needed to transition apart from high school to college. Because to be honest, college is actually harder than, than the NBA. What? You know, a lot of people, I, I think so. Me personally, because... You know, you could play zone, you could play boxing one. It's like FIBA rules. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can guard guys differently. And the NBA is wide open. You know, it's all one on one. It's, NBA is easy. It's not hard. If you can, if you're strong, if you can shoot and you can drive and you can pass, you can play in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? But it's being able to, to be consistent. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys weren't able to be consistent, you know, mm -hmm. at playing at a high level. Because whatever reasons of why they weren't able to be consistent. So, you know, college was like, it's it's pressure playing in college because your goal, everyone know your goal is to go to the NBA. Right. Everybody want to go to the NBA, right? So you use that, you use college, you use high school to go to a really good school, right? To be, you know, one of the top recruits. And then after your looked upon as one of the top recruits, then you want to get drafted. But, you know, it's one thing going to the – I tell guys, it's one thing going to the NBA. It's another thing playing in the NBA. A lot of guys, you know, they inspire to make it to the NBA, but not everybody inspired to go to the NBA and dominate. My brother is instilled in my mind from a young age, you want to go to the NBA, kick the door down, and you want to bust everybody ass. You know what I'm saying? So it became a mind frame. So, you know, from high school to co – from high school to college – to the NBA, you you actually need all of those different platforms. You know, it's a lot of talk about what Bassey. You know, Bassey did was yeah, he's a one on one of, of guards who did that. But you know, his NBA career because he didn't go to college, he missed a big part of basketball and what he needed to be successful, to be consistent. You know, in college it helps build that consistency because you gotta 
you got to go to class. I mean, I ain't really go to class, but <laughs> you got to do so many different things. You got to do so many different things, you know, practice, you know, you learn, you get into a routine that helps build consistency. And I, I think that is one of the things that helped me from, from high school going in to the NBA because I had a solid foundation. I understood. So going to college, I didn't go to school for long. I was only in school for what, four or five months, you know, playing the season five months and then you go right to the NBA. Yo, you know, what's crazy Steph? Like it was a whole nother world, you know, you being from the boroughs in Brooklyn and playing on over there and I'm from the Island, but guess what? You more talked about on Long Island then, you know what I'm saying? And so we know who you are. And so we looking forward. We can't so we can't wait to see you play against you. I only know one other player that was as big as you in high school, and that was Felipe Lopez. And mm -hmm. the one thing that I would say is what was it like every single night, regardless if you played in the park, if you played, you played uh school ball, that you always had that mark on your back. That was my enjoyment. Cause I everybody had a mark on my back, but I had a mark on everybody else. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So I knew guys wanted to bust my ass, but they didn't know I wanted to bust their ass more than they wanted to bust my ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was mentality. And you know, I talk shit, excuse my language. I talk, I talk, I talked a lot of junk when junk was talked to me. I never really said anything on the court until somebody said something to me. And then once somebody said something to me, it would be the whole game. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you punch me in my face. I got, I feel like I got, now I can step to you whenever I want to step to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's always a fight when I say it's a fight. You feel me? Like, I didn't bother you. I didn't do anything to you. So, you know, play, playing with that mark. And, you know, we had to have that, we had to have that, that chip on our shoulder coming from NY. It was you, Rafa. It's, it's all over, like, you play against guys that you don't know about, and you like, yo, who's that kid? You like, oh, that's that kid. He, his name is Booger. And <laughs> you like, who's that? You know what I'm saying? And like, and now he he out here embarrassing you, throwing the ball through your legs, wrapping the ball around your head. You looking at the ref like, nah, that's not a call. That's for real. Like we do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you run up against these type of cats, and you don't you don't know these guys. That was us. That was that was that was New York. You know what I'm saying? On any any park, anywhere, it's, it's somebody that's nitro. You know what I'm saying? And that is what I believe made me into the player that I was. Cause I, I consider myself a playground player, a, a, a street ball player. I don't look at it like I was I come from the streets in basketball. It was just organized because, you know, I had I had older brothers who play street ball and they understood the organization of what you needed to do to be able to go to the NBA by being able to play street basketball, but utilizing your talent to go play high school basketball, play college basketball, and then so on, go to the NBA and then China. Let me ask you this, going, going into, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a skip up with college because you went for like one year. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long way. Right. <laughs> Out. Yo, we're gonna, we're gonna skip over Georgia Tech. Shout out to Georgia Tech. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Georgia Tech. Going into that 96 draft, arguably the probably the best draft class ever. Um, the preparation for the NBA, how did you get prepared for that mentally, psychologically? And what was the first thing you bought once you got that check? I got my mom's a crib. I mean, uh, I got a car, but I pretty much my since I've been in the NBA, I spread my my I spread my wealth through my 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 family and my community. Um, I've spent more money on other people than I spent on myself. I should mm -hmm. say that. Um, and I think you know, for me, it's never it was never about um having a lot for self. It was more about because I come from a big family. There's seven of us, with so nine of us in the crib. And, and I'm next to the baby. So it was more about the family values of sharing and making sure everybody was good. And I look at my brothers now, all of them got master's degrees, they're teachers, they're working in the community and school system. You know, I helped them all 
and they helped me. You know, what they gave me was was priceless and information. You know, information is so powerful, which is becomes the knowledge of what you're able to spread and what you're able to give. And my mom and my dad, you know, they stress the fact of the more you give, the more you'll you'll be blessed. And coming from a, a, a Christian family, like super saved family, you have no choice, actually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But for me, that was the first thing that was the most important thing. My mom, I worked and put in that work to get my mom out of the hood, period. That's really what it was all about. I remember that draft, man. That was that was a legendary draft. Um you go to you you get drafted first, you get traded to Minnesota, you go there with KG. How was it that first year with mm -hmm. KG? Amazing. You know, Kev is one of the hardest working basketball players that I've ever been around. Um he's a super student to the game. His knowledge um increased um dramatically from the NBA, like from high school to the end, because Kev went right out of high school, obviously, right? Um, and when he got into the NBA, he has such a big learning curve. He has such a big learning curve because, you know, he had guys like Kevin Miguel, Kevin McHale, who played that position, gave him so many, so many tools to be able to go on the court and play at a at a high level, but the understanding and the knowledge. So Kev was like one of the, I mean, I got Kev and Tim Duncan as my fours. You know, yeah. Those two yeah. guys. Yeah, I can see that. At the four position, he's like A and B, you know, it could go either way or, or like as far as what you need. And Kev to me was, you know, playing with him. It was like, like one of the best experiences you can have as a as a young player going into the NBA because we weren't that far. We were same class, ninety five class, but Kev because he went this, went right out. His learning curve for the the year that him and I played, it was it was it was incredible. You know, he made me look good because I made him because I was making him look good. You know what I'm saying? So we complimented each other. Yo, Steph, you know what's crazy, man, is how. People always talked about how good of a scorer you was, but no one really gave you your credit of how good of a passer you was. Like you was a real live floor general out there. And that's the crazy thing is how well people overlook that skill of yours. I think, you know, because I was a scoring guard and I wasn't labeled anymore as a guy that played the point, it was like, oh, he can score. They forget about you know, eight, nine, ten assists a game. It became something that was normal for people to, like, oh, he had eight dimes. It was normal. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when you watch Stockton, you already know of 12 dimes. It's normal to, like, think of him getting, like, 12 to 50. You know what I'm saying? So it became normal for people to think, like, oh, yes, I've had eight, nine, nine assists, but he had 30. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, it, it, it was something that you imprinted inside of people's minds, basketball people's minds, which is something hard to do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because when that's that's what I say when you speak about consistency, when you when you're consistent at doing something, you actually expect, you know what I'm saying? Like you expect that. Like I expect you to down that top of the key jumper with that jumper you got. You know what I'm saying, Mike? I, I like when you when we played against you, you get wide open, I'm like, oh shit, I missed him. That's good. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like you already know. It's I was like, going crazy. I was going crazy when that happened. <laughs> yeah, like that's 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 what it is. Like you know, you 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 build that. Like you can't leave certain guys open. You know that. Like oh, Dennis Rodman. Like oh, I'm not even gonna go attempt to go get that rebound. I already yeah. know that's his. You know what I'm saying? Like, but when you can when you can do that in basketball, you know that's like in our regular human everyday life and us just watching the game. You expect that. Like I ex I expect Steph Curry to knock down that three, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like and, and yeah. that that and that that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to get to that point. Hey, let me ask you this question, man. How hard was it? I know you was happy to be back home, but how hard mm -hmm. was it being back home, man? Playing in front of the family. You know, 
Plan in front of the family wasn't the hard part. It was like the, the managing of everything else, of the tickets and, you know, <laughs> you, know you gotta do this, you gotta do that. You know, you gotta get the, the, the big kids section. You know what I'm saying? It, that that part, you know, when I, <laughs> that part was probably like the, the challenging part. I think it was, you know, for me growing up in New York, because I'm from New York and I played in New York, I understood the media from, you know, Planning and playing in front of the media in New York for so many years, um, that wasn't the hard part. I think you know, just trying to manage, uh, manage everything was a that was a that was a challenge. Um, you know, playing in New York was it was a great experience for me. You know, moving forward in my in my basketball career, although it wasn't the best it wasn't the the best time as far as what came out of it during that time but for myself I learned a lot I grew a lot um as a as a person and as a basketball player through all my mistakes through all of the challenges that I faced um but that time it helped you know create a, a different type of thickness of of faith um and commitment towards my goal and what it was that I wanted to do in basketball. Um, I always wanted, you know, I, I never, I never lost until I, I went to New Jersey. When I went to the Nets, that's when the first time I experienced losing in my career. So from that time period up until I won my first championship in, 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 in Beijing as a professional basketball player, I credit what I went through in New York because, you know, at the end of it, it was at that point where I could either have sunk or swim. And yeah. I chose to swim. Yeah, I chose to swim. You know what? Okay, let me ask you this question because me personally, I think you're a first um first um first um team or um, all first ballot um Hall of Fame. Facts. Uh, facts. You, know, you, facts. you had listen, your career, you can't deny your career. You know, a person can hate all they want to, but they can't deny what you've accomplished on the court individually. Even during those seasons that you was losing, a Hall of Famer has nothing to do with how many championships and how many wins you have. It, it all has everything to do with how you dominated your position through your career and consistently, like you said earlier. And you was able to accomplish that. Do you think those last years in New York is one of those things that will stop you from the name that they tried to give you based off of who you was as the athlete in the league and what you accomplished in the league? Well, in New York, they had a vote where I was considered the most reviled athlete in New York City sports history. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you know, only New York they could do that. I was like, how many people voted? Uh, about 200. Let me see the people who voted. How do they look? Do they look like me? Or do they look like somebody else? Right. So I was like, you know, I could I could accept that. But you know, I take all of I, I take all of that from what went on and what happened, but at the same time, what was done was done. My numbers are Hall of Fame, period. Nice. If I'm if I'm being mentioned in the same breath of Oscar Robinson, not forget about championships. I'm just talking about numbers. You know, if it's only Two or three people that are being mentioned at a position, and we're talking about Magic, Isaiah, Steph Curry, Kyrie, Derrick Rose, all of these players, right? For a guard to do anything damn near over a decade consistently, every night, right? You know 36 points is going up on the board. That's a lot of numbers. To go up on the on the on the board. So before the game start, you could put my twenty and my eight dimes up on the board, like throw them up on the scoreboard, not yeah. on the board for my points or my assists. I'm talking about thirty six points are, are gonna go up on the on the board. Yeah. For that, you know, I, I I feel the same way you guys feel. That's you know that is that's that's Hall of Fame. Period. And you can't deny that. If you take my name off of my jersey and you put somebody else's name on the jersey, that same person should be receiving the same award. It doesn't matter. It's just the body of work and what was done. 
Um, unfortunately, a lot of people get the person mixed up with the personality. So I think that is where it comes in at as far as me speaking my mind and speaking how I felt about what it was that was going on. Like, I'm not afraid to speak about Larry Brown. If you were an asshole to me, you were an asshole to me. If I was an asshole to you, I was an asshole to you. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm able to move forward and move past <clears throat> all of those different things that have gone on that probably would alienate me from um, making the Hall of Fame. But if it comes down to that, I'm okay with it. You know, I'm, I'm okay with, you know, being judged by how my relationships were with coaches. People don't know, know on between the coach and I. So you're only speaking on one side. It's three sides to the story. Your side, my side of the truth. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for me, when I when I hear you guys say that, I really truly appreciate that because I know the coach will know what's up at the end of the day. Right. Yo, you you know what's crazy, man, is that we went over to China like around the same time, you know, in the mm -hmm. beginning. And mm -hmm. I couldn't, I didn't really understand the Chinese culture. And it was hard for me to adjust. And you, you're a Chinese demigod, little demigod over there. Like they, and you know what? Big ups to everything that you was able to accomplish over there. How were you able, how hard was it one to adjust to the culture? And how, how were you able you know what I'm saying? To ex outside of what they was the appreciation that they was giving you, how was you able to live life and accept their life and their culture? Because it was hard for me. You know, the, at, when I first went during the time that I went, I left during the time when I was like I was depressed. I didn't I wasn't I didn't play basketball for like over a year. I was out of shape. It was so many. I had so many elements and so many. Um factors that were up against that I was that I was up against during that time when I came here but the time that I did come when I made the decision because when I left to come to China I made the decision then that I wasn't going back to the NBA I said when I leave here that's it it's done which it took me like a month to make the decision to leave to come to play in China so when I got here I came, you know, with the mind frame that I was going to be completely vulnerable and I was going to just accept and just love and who and just go, I'm going forward in my life. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't in a space as how you were when you came here or other foreign players came here. I already knew what it was that I was doing as far as me leaving the NBA because I know when I left the NBA, I didn't tell a soul that I was leaving and coming to China. When I was in China doing my press conference, people didn't find out like to like three days later. One is a time difference, right? It's 13 hours ahead. So, and I did my press conference like on a Friday. So that whole weekend, nobody, they didn't catch the news until like Monday, Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? About that I was playing basketball. I was going to be playing basketball in China. So when I got here, you know, the culture barrier, um, the food, the language, all of these, all of these challenges were, they were right there in front of me, but because of where I was in my mind and in my spirit, I was just in a space where I just wanted to play and I didn't really care about all of the obstacles that I was getting ready to face. So I think because I was in a different space in my life during that time, I was able to just evolve and, and move on. And when I first got here, you know, I played and did all of that and got better. And then when I tried to come back the following year, I actually, you know, we were, you was in Forshan. You was with the team that had moved to Forshan. You know, they were in another place and you was playing with Jay Humphreys. Uh -huh. So Jay knew that you really didn't want to be there. Right. And this is crazy because Jay knew you really didn't want to be there, right? So when this was going on, he was like, man, Mike was here. He was just, you know, scoring and 
you know, gone. Mike was just going, you know, and he was like, at that time, I needed somebody that, that, you know, wanted to play the point and where I was at in my life. So I was like, I was like, you let Mike go? He was like, man, Mike was, Mike was on. <laughs> he was like, Mike, Mike was on. Mike was in here trying to score 60. <laughs> Chinese, player, Chinese players looking at him like, yo, this guy's really, <laughs> yeah, he can score, but what's up? So, you know, during that time when I, when, 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 when you had left, I think you had, I don't know what happened. He was, I think you had, was like, yo, you was out. I don't know what went on. Anyway, so I ended up playing with Jay. Played a full season with him after a whole bunch of stuff that went on with the other team. Passed on that. Played with Jay. And then I went to, you know, I actually earned the stripes to be able to go play in Beijing to play in Capital. After, after that happened, you know, my whole life changed. Like, for yeah. basketball, it, it just, it, it all changed coming, coming to Beijing after we won the championship. <clears throat> Once they built the statue, I was like, there's no way that I'm coming back to my urban. Because you know, <laughs> Kevin McHale was like Houston Rockets, because people don't know, like or a lot of people don't know, the Houston Rockets was like the Dallas Cowboys to China for yeah. basketball because of Yao. You know what I'm saying? So the whole China, they supported the Houston Rockets, which is why guys like Tracy McGrady and, and Steve Francis, they always start in the All-Star game because the NBA, the NBA allowed... China to vote, right? Yes. Because of Yao. So now you do the math. It's a it's 400 million people that play basketball here. So you already know all of those guys were unanimously, you know, starting on an Austin game. So they Kevin McHale called me up, called my team like three times, like, oh, we want stuff to come back. I was like, I was like, I can't do it. I was like, it's like, oh, you can get my my my, my manager was like, yo. He was like, yo, you know, be, he was like, yo, we, you went from 20 million to zero. Now you make it like, I was like, yo, it ain't about the money. I was like, there's no way that I can leave this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't do it. I was like, they yeah. just now built this statue. I was like, it's, I can't do that. I was like, it's, 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 I can't do it. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to make that decision. I was like, I'm, I'm, I choose to stay. So I chose to stay here over, over the bread and the NBA. Which wow. I feel like was the best decision that I ever made in my basketball career, as far as making the decision to go in another direction, because it's the complete opposite direction, NBA and CBA. It's still hoop, but you know, NBA is the NBA. Period. Let me let me ask you this: When you got to the NBA, who's the who's the play that you probably didn't look at like he was nice, but you were surprised when you got on the court with him? He was kind of nice. Everybody. 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 Every, it, there, there are no bums in the NBA. If you ever you said dude on a court in the NBA, they was nice in high school. They was nice in college. Somewhere and on any given night, on any given night, you can't you can't sleep on nobody. You can't be going on into the game thinking, oh, you know, even backups because you know backups is like, oh, this is my opportunity. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This is this is my this is my time to shine. So I never looked at nobody like that ever, never. Because I, you know, I played against Terrell Brandon one time at, as a at, when I was young, like I think my rookie year. I was like, "Yo, this dude, <laughs> this dude right here, <laughs> this dude right here, <laughs> mid range pull ups." You gotta chase him off a screen like Reggie. You know, it was it was it was serious. Like you get, I'm talking about real lessons that you're yeah. getting. Robin, I'm talking about Robin Pack. You know what I'm saying? Like people are like who Robin Pack? I'm like, yo, you don't understand. This dude was a bull, like <laughs> yeah, a man. real live bull and a speed demon. <laughs> Robin, tell him, let him know, Mike. You know, but there's a lot of players. You know, that people think that because they're sitting on a bench or they're not um, playing a lot on the team, like if they you put them in a park or a pickup game, they're going to knock down 15, 23s on you and you're going to be, you know, people always, they forget how good, you know, players really was. You, I throw a name out there, Brent Price, Mark Price. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mark Price. Magician. Like, you Mark know, Price. Yeah. I, I look at you, Steph, you know, in today's game. I can't name five starters right now that you wouldn't like. There's not five starters in the NBA right now 
in the NBA that you wouldn't that you can name that will start over you. You know, based if we, if with you in your prime, like you was that special as a player. And even talking about that now, the main, you know, one of the reasons why all the hype been going on the past couple of uh, days and weeks is talking about New York's finest. You know what I mean? And I, I just want to say that when it comes to talking about greatness, you just can't be great at one stage in your career. You know, you can't, you can't start off great and then fall off. You gotta, I mean, you're like a, I tell my little daughter this um, all the time. She's a teenager now, but I was like, man, you was beautiful your whole life. You was beautiful as a little baby. When you first came out, you was beautiful. Now look at you and you, I can say, I, I believe when you become an adult, you're gonna be just as beautiful. And that's how your career was. You know what I mean? You didn't just have like, just come out of nowhere. You basically was considered chosen you know, without having the hype, or no, I won't say hype without having as much um as much notoriety as a LeBron may have today. You was that person in New York. You know what I mean? And now people talk about greatness, like you was always every level, and then you won championships when they called you old and that you can't do it no more, and that your body right. broke down, like you playing in a league where it ain't nothing but grizzlies and it's animals out there. And you still, uh, you still created a name for yourself. I don't even think I could name five athletes that have statues. Um, you know what I mean? Whether it's NBA or even in Europe or whatever the case may be. And so when it comes to greatness, I will say Rod Strickland is my GOAT. You know That's what I'm saying? When it comes to greatness. Kenny's mine. Yeah. Kenny, uh, Kenny, Kenny, and, Kenny and Rod, obviously, but Kenny, hey, Kenny was mine. Man, Kenny, Rod... But after that, can't nobody go before you. You know, there's nobody coming up. Me personally, that's what I would say. Can't no player, you can put no player in that place. You know what I'm saying? Can go next behind that because what you've accomplished in this game, you didn't just accomplish it in high school. You didn't just accomplish it in, co in college. You didn't just accomplish it just NBA. You went to the CBA. And at no point did you fall off at no point. So I salute you to that for real. That's right. Oh, oh, my game. Game. Hold on. I got I gotta say this though. After Kenny and Rod, Steph, do you feel like you're the best guard out of New York? Look, I, I'm gonna <laughs> leave it at, I'm gonna leave it like this because I'm 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 sitting in China and I'm watching, and I'm looking at I'm looking at all Look at the talk, oh, like it got down to PSL and Catholic school. I said, damn. I said, oh, they going all the way in. And then you got crazy ass Cam. I'm like, oh God, I don't even want to get into it right now. He got the show. He's doing all of the stuff. Have you played, did you ever play with Cam? Nice. Yeah, Cam was Cam was nice from when we was 12 all the way to high school. Like Cam really was really, really could play. Him and Mace. They really could play. Like, trust. That's 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 not no gas neither. Like, and you know, when I hear when when he talk about basketball and people don't know that he played ball, like Cam is not and Cam is smart. Cam inmates, those dudes are not stupid dudes. Those dudes are like intelligent human beings. You can't do what they do and not be that. So them playing basketball and talking about basketball, I'm like, those dudes know what they're talking about. So you gotta be careful when you speak with them. And then they're comedians. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta really watch them, but you know. When I look at when I look at the guards that came before me, and like people don't even talk about guys like David Kane that that played for yeah. Stevenson, yeah. you know, like it's so many Dave Edwards. There's so many dudes that you could look at and be like, yo. And Dave used to get like 50, 60, 70, You know what I'm saying? And I heard Kenny say something about all oh, the PSL. I'm like, dude, stop, Kenny. You know, P PSL. PSL Catholic School, stop. You, it, it was all hoop. You know what I'm saying? It was all hoop. It didn't matter if you played for St. Ray's or if you played for Utrecht. You know what I'm saying? Like you play, you had to bring it. Period. Like it's 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 ball. And for me, when I look and I hear about the guards, I always speak and talk about Kenny Rod, because those are the guys. My brother. I'm not even talking about my brother Juju, because I. I'll be biased if I speak about my brother Juju. Like my brother, 
Norm was nasty. You know what I'm saying? Like nasty. And I, and I don't say that because he's my brother, but I don't, I, I, when I look at the guards, I'm like, you got Tiny Archibald, you got Lenny Wilkins, you got like dudes that are like historical figures in basketball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I said, let me get the record straight. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the best basketball player ever come out of New York City. It's not yeah. even close. Okay, let's just make sure we clear. It's like talking about Jordan and everybody else. It's, it's, for me, that's how I feel. And you know, when I when I when I hear about the guards, you know, I let what I did put me in my 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 place, and I'll leave it at that. You know, what I did as far as playing basketball in high school, it was part of a shift in the game as the 96 draft class was a shift in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? We we were impact players. We came in and we changed programs. I went to Georgia Tech. They weren't in the they, they didn't make the NCAAs for two years in a row. Crimmins came and got me. I went to Georgia Tech. We went to the Sweet 16. School made a lot of money. Okay. So <laughs> for me, when I look at the guards, my the person who I I put I put Kenny and I put Rod as the top guys because those guys I mean for Kenny Kenny was the guy that I was idolizing and looking up to like man I want to be like this dude right here you know when I go to high school to get all of the accolades and awards and all of the different things Mr Basketball Chips you know what I'm saying that's what it was really about you know when I first met Kenny I will never forget I met I seen him at IS eight. Yeah, Georgia Tech, they had the, this one, the letter jackets just came out, you know, the glossy ones. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had a blue one on. I remember that, the whole situation. You know, so for me, that's those are the guys who are before us, and those are the guys that paved the way, and those are the guys that were the best to me in, 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 in high school. That's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, I, I hear you, Steph. But what you real humble, <laughs> Come on, Steph. No, I mean, that's how I really feel, though. Yeah, 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 that's how I feel. Give you flowers instead of you giving yourself flowers. You look, I, I only go by how I feel, and that's that's my 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 God honest truth and feeling about what I saw growing up and what I witnessed. You know what I what I did playing basketball, and and in in high school, it it doesn't measure towards what. Kenny and what Sebastian and those guys did. Bassey high school career was phenomenal. It was it was crazy. Lance Stevenson, his his basketball career in high school, is incredible. Like it's it, it like for me, I I wish I could have done those things that those guys did, um, playing. And I will say that Bassey should be considered as one of the top point guards. The best, I don't consider him the best after seeing what I saw because he didn't do anything different. He didn't do any, first of all, he couldn't dunk. Okay. He didn't play above the rim. So any guard that couldn't play above the rim and didn't, to me, you got to have everything. You got to be able to do everything on a basketball court and it has to transition from there to the next space. So speaking of talking about high school, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool, but it's still a low level. When you start talking about the big boy league, man, you gotta be a killer in the league. You gotta be a killer uh, in the league. You gotta be a killer. You know, to be respected. You gotta continue. You can't, can't stop. Come on, come on. You gotta kill the big fish. You gotta be a big fish killing the big fish. And you yeah. was able to accomplish that for your career, man. And yo, I appreciate you, man, truly coming out and hanging out with us this Word evening. Word up, man. Word up. Oh, this means a lot to oh, the yeah. single podcast. We have the legend Stephon Marbury on the check-in. What time is it in China right now? It is 11.46. Okay. AM. AM? Okay. Okay. Say word. Say word. <laughs> hey, so, hey, you got your past. You, you, you a legitimate um, uh, Chinese uh, citizen now. I am. <laughs> I am. How does that I feel, am. man, having that access? 
Last it question. feels great. <laughs> it, feels, it feels great. It feels great. I mean, people that don't know, if they don't know, you know, you know. <laughs> you know what it is. You know how hard it is to enter and go out. <laughs> I might need to talk to you about getting some uh, some clothing material. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. Man, it's you know easy. what? Last question, man. Shout out your clothing line. And shout out your shoes. Oh, y'all seen the sneakers. You know what I'm saying? And let them oh, let the people know how they can get to your product because that's dope that you're still out there, you know, representing your brand. Sure. And you know, we want to show you.com. Xavier-3.com. That's it. You know, we 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 you know, we I've been I've I've always been trying to basically give back. You know, I've given back, you know, with $15 kicks. Now I got shoes that's lifestyle because people was like yo we like the $15 shoes but do you got other stuff and I'm like yeah it's, it's a lot of stuff to make you know and when I was able to get into the big box stores um for the masses that was that was vital and important to me to be able to allow our people not just our people all people but our people to be able to have access to something that they didn't have access to and that's affordable products and I'm I'm blessed to be able to still be able to do what it is that I'm doing. Um, I thank God all day, every day for all that he has done for me and put me in a space to be able to still create and do what it is that I'm doing. Um, and that's it, you know? That's that's basically what I'm what I'm what I'm on, trying to always shift and create and change for the in a positive way. That's what's up. That's what it is. Let's say we're a podcast, NBA champion, Mike James, Stephon Marbury. My God, we appreciate you. Say word. We up out of here. Appreciate it. Love. Appreciate Love. you. I stay blessed. Always. All right. All right.